Hey, do you guys want to buy a kingfish? You want to live in a crazy house even though you're not crazy? Are you in the market for two-headed monsters? If you just like listening to more stories every week, then you can help me out. Go to my website, jmore.com, and click on the Amazon link on my website. If you're going to be shopping at Amazon anyway, why not help support more stories at the same time by going to jmore.com, J-A-Y-M-O-H-R.com, bleep, and then click on the Amazon link to their homepage, and then you can shop for whatever you want. Instead of me pushing a product on you, you can just simply go to amazon.com through jmore.com and get any product you want. I mean, I do a lot of favors for you, don't I? I ask you for one thing here, Henry. Go to amazon.com through jmore.com. Look, this is Harvey Keitel. Go to jmore.com. Click the link. Who's going to be okay at amazon.com through jmore.com? Say the damn words. Do me a favor. Help us out. Help keep this podcast rolling. You know how much money I got to pay Matt Cohen every week? Go to amazon.com through jmore.com and I will personally mail each of you $15 million. Part of this was made up. Hey, come see me live. If you live in Richmond, British Columbia, Vancouver, where you at? Canada. I'm going to be at River Rock Casino, March 30th. Also, come see us do a live podcast at the incredible Irvine Improv, April 4th and April 10th. Can't wait to see you guys out there. But at my donuts. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Boogly. Before we start, a toast, gentlemen. Ed Paxton. Mad Paxton. My dad is Ed Paxton. I know. Oh, to Ed Paxton. Yes. Thank you, sir. Ed Paxton. Thank you. Raise him up. Last time you were on Thank the podcast, you, we spoke so fondly, and you had such a smile on your face you talking did, about man. your dad. You, you know, I don't think you realize. I got to take the scarf off. I can't do a scarf. <laughs> I'm not a scarf. It's a little chilly in the studios yeah. today, so I'm handing out scarves. Thank you. My it's life has gotten Dave fancy, no- man. I'm sitting in a. Fancy garage up in Malibu Canyon with a scarf on. That's how we do it, bro. This is fancy. This is, you know, the trick is to buy a house when you're not on a sitcom. Because the sitcom gets canceled. Mortgages don't. They just keep grinding along. So the house becomes this thing on your back that you worry about. Yeah, see, I splurged that, that hoarder money and uh, bought this fancy house you know, in Richmond, Virginia. I love I'm Richmond. Stuck. We talked about it yeah. last time you were on. Matt Paxton is here. You see him all the time on Hoarders. His company is Clutter Cleaners. Most importantly, his podcast, which is great, is called Five Decisions Away. And uh, I've been listening to it. There's a different song every week, every which week, is man. fun. Is that submissions? Yeah, it's just people. I just put a thing on Facebook. I said, anybody wants to sing a song, sing me a song. Some are awesome. Some are horrible. But we play them all. surprising you get something horrible back from the world of the internet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing to me that people send it thinking, this is going to win. This, this is awesome. There was a girl that sang, when you did animal hoarding, there was a girl, the name of the episode was animal hoarding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A girl did an acoustic guitar song, and it sounded exactly like Ralphie May's wife, Lana Turner. No relation. But she's like a real funny comedian, and it was she not plays her. acoustic guitar, and like, she's got a whole bunch of songs about like jizz. And, but Maybe it was, it was. I have to go back and look. I think you would know, like, cause yeah. you'd be totally in Ralphie's, you know, Ralphie yeah, and you would be his, best buddies. I'm Ralphie's not in his world. one of the world's yeah. greats. That's what I hear. And then I heard a rap guy do it. Oh, those, these, uh, white rappers from Baltimore, those guys are hardcore and they're sending some good stuff. That, wow, Ryan Sickler's gonna weep. Out of the whole city of Baltimore, you found the two white guys that rap mm-hmm. as opposed to every black guy in Baltimore. Yeah, the, both of them sent songs in. <laughs> the two white guys. The two white and guys. then they found, I like And they think, might weigh 200 pounds combined. Huh? Like they're, they're all, like they're 100 pounds. Those guys are tiny. I like to think they never met and they somehow collaborated out of nowhere. It, it like, the made, two white, like particles finding each other <laughs> yeah. in the universe, the two white guys in What's Baltimore. 
Kevin Warline is a guy's the one guy who's amazing. Want to get stuff. the Avid Brothers to yeah. do you a tune, oh, dude? Would that be like? If you start listening to them, I'm totally into the Avid Brothers. I, did now. I not turn you the right way? You did it right. They're amazing. And now I, I see their name them. everywhere. Yeah, they're they're getting big. A lot of festival stuff. Big. I think it's the only way to make money in music now is festivals. You think so? I think so. We or regret. you got to be like on the Housewives and just do a single on iTunes. Or just yeah, right? Like the theme song to yeah. Ghost Whisperer. Yeah. Or you know what I mean? Is that what you mean? No, I'm talking about like all those girls from uh, Housewives in New York. That oh, just, they don't make horrific songs. Yeah, they, they don't, don't really get stuff? paid. That's yeah. Money can't buy <laughs> your class. <laughs> Elegance is learned, my friend. I'm so Tardy happy. for the party. There's so many shows I want to talk to you about. Do you know how many hashtags yeah. we get? People saying, "When are you talking about the Real Housewives?" And I'm like, I don't. Andy Cohen gassed yeah. me. He wouldn't come on the pod. He didn't even return my call when he really? was down. But I will say this: that's the way to play it. <laughs> don't don't get on the phone yeah. and go, hey, you know, I got this meeting. We'll see how it goes. Just act like you were never here for three days and then answer your phone when you're back in the Hamptons and go, yeah, it was crazy, man. Yeah, I'm so busy. Sorry. I didn't know where my phone was. I left it in a yeah. rental car and then I just got home. Yeah, and like, have you ever saw someone that didn't have their phone like right on them? They're like, oh, I didn't know you called no, me. He, I'm like, he dude, avoided you me. every five seconds at your phone. He, he avoided me, which was uh, honestly, I think is the way to play it. That's the way to go. You just avoid the person completely as opposed to going, I don't want him to bullshit me and have a weird friendship. Y'all are buds, right? Yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's my gay. I have one gay. That he's it? I think so. I don't know how many other gays well, we have. He's Jewish and gay, so you knock out two, really. Yeah, I got a lot of Jewish yeah. friends, but I don't have many gays, which I don't understand. I'm pretty gay friendly. Yeah. And I, I blew a kid when I was seven, yeah. which people was, don't. So, I talked about it on the Colin Quinn podcast. People were like, when are you going to tell that story? When are you going to tell that story? And then I told the story, and they're like, wow, I did not need to hear that. Yeah. Someone I, someone was like all upset about it. It called me, and I'm like, dude, I, I know Jay, but like I, I can't tell him what story to say and not to say. They called you upset that – They were just upset by the story. And then and it was a tame version of it. And it's it. a girl that, I mean, I barely know her. She's all a right, really good writer. Let me interrupt you. Yes. What I say on stage, when I'll tell that story on stage – and the girls, never the guys, go, oh, and I go, lady, I quit. <laughs> you'll be, you'll have something in your mouth tonight if you play your cards right. I'm completely done. It didn't take. So I don't know why you're moaning when for me it was a one-off. Just check it off the list. Huh? Just check it off the list. I just checked it off my bucket list. At seven years old, I was like, nah, that's not for me. I like getting it. Did not like doing it. Gross. Tasted like pennies. <laughs> I, did, you, did you hear this, dude? That's my little signal flare so yeah. people know I'm yeah. telling the truth. <laughs> Is that true? Is that what it tastes like? Yeah, it tastes like pennies. Did I asked those uh, two gay guys on my, my podcast. I was like, what, does dick taste as bad as you think it would? And they both at the same time like, no, not really. Well, not to <laughs> that. You asked the wrong demo. Oh, yeah, you should I mean, ask the guy a, in jail that has forced to do it. Yeah, that was a loaded uh, – what do you? Question. I like you on your podcast. Uh, one of the ones I listened to. Oh shoot, I forget which one. I listened to a whole bunch in the last week. There's like eight total on iTunes. Twenty one now, man. On iTunes, they oh because they only ranked the f- yeah 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 eight. the top okay, eight. Okay, gotcha. Ones. And you had two guests on Jackson and those are the guys Jackson and Mike and Mike. But then you said those were their like fake names fake to names, protect yes. their privacy. Why? They didn't. They're not ashamed. They just don't. Jackson has a very specific job, and it's actually in the hoarding field. He's oh, actually, so they're not even hoarders. They no, Jackson workers. was a really bad hoarder. And but now he has a job working with. He's hoarders. a CPS worker, so like he removes children from homes that are messy, and he is actually a recovering hoarder. So he wants his identity protected because if we knew what his job was, he could lose his job. He removes children from homes that weren't as bad as his home. Oh, so his identity might need to be protected because people come after him for taking their kids away. It could be. Maybe he doesn't want to lose his job. How would he lose his job, Maddie? Because he was his house was worse than the houses he was pulling people out of. But doesn't that make him qualified? I, that's what I would say. <laughs> it was a wonderful house. Like we totally the guy is a great story. The love story. The guys literally found, these two dudes found each other. They fell in love, and they overcame hoarding so they could get married. Like awesome story. And That's the dirtiest I, gay love story I've ever here. heard. Literally. That we, is literally the dirtiest, dirtiest gay love story I met uh, through hoarding. How did they how, – how do hoarders meet one another? Well, uh, sorry. Mike uh, was not a hoarder. 
He was just gay, and they met because they were gay. Where do you meet? All right. And I, I think there's bars for gay guys, I think. Come on! That's what I hear, man. That's that, what, I hear. what is this, the future? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just But talking. if you're a hoarder, the whole thing is, uh, you know, they do leave their house a lot. You're right. And I guess you would want to go out to the bars and have a, a life that is not a hoarding life. Yeah. He never wanted to go home. He was the party guy, so he always stayed out. He'd always stay at the other dude's house. He, like, they had dated for like a year. He's and fun. Never. Yeah, he's fun. He's party If you're boy. gay, he's your guy. He was the guy. He was party Wow, boy. this guy just came right home with me. You didn't realize it's because he couldn't get the holiday wreaths out from in front of his door. full back blondie tattoo. The whole, his whole back is a blondie uh, album cover. Oh, I thought you meant the comic strip. No. Dagwood actual... Bumstead holding a sandwich. <laughs> the other blondie. Don't hold it in. Uh, by the way, you did a great job on Howard Stern, and Thank I was you, sir. driving in my car listening to my Sirius XM satellite radio, and I was so fired up when I heard you on Howard. I'm like, yes, big time. It, it, it is. Paxton's man, hit. You don't realize you like released all that, man. Like I was literally, when I got on yours, I was like, I better do a podcast. So I had one podcast before I came on yours. And then because I came on your podcast, it just exploded, and I got tons and tons of press from it. I mean, I had Wait, like, you got press from being on my podcast? Yeah, I had like 300, maybe 300 downloads before I went on your podcast. Okay. And we're getting like 100,000 a week now. Mm. And it started with coming to more stories. Some dude from, a writer from the Leno show heard me on your thing. They're good guys over there in Leno. He called up my book, this is a crazy story, called up my book agent and was like, we heard Matt on more stories, we want him to come in and tell some funny hoarder stories. And so my book ate, because there's so many I'm funny sorry. hoarder stories, right? It's like, we yeah. saw him on intervention. If he could just come on and really make fun make of drunks. Laugh. <laughs> exactly. Well, if that he, was, if he could just yeah. come on, maybe not so much the heroin people, mm-hmm. but if he could really hit the drunks and the meth people, that's what we're looking for on Leno. Hence why you haven't seen me on Leno, because <laughs> everything we sent wasn't funny. I was like, it's just not really that funny of a topic. And and so we ended up not doing it. But well, what a great compliment yeah. to the podcast! Oh that my you god, you and I had so much fun totally. laughing. Oh my, I could. I mean, I was. I couldn't believe we even got and asked. Let's not mention somebody. Okay. So when you do Howard, were you nervous going in there? It, I didn't go in. It was a call in, which I'm glad. Oh, that's right. And yeah. it was weird because rarely do you hear a call in talking to other callers. Yeah, you I, were taking calls. I didn't even know I was going to take calls. Like I thought it was going to be an eight minute call. I've been hustling trying to get on there for months. Because every time I go to the city, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be in. Would love to come in. You know, I call everybody. Anybody that I know has ever showed interest, I let them know I'm coming to the city. Didn't you do Opie and Anthony? I've done Opie and Anthony, yeah. Did they actually going back next week. They're good guys. They, they've been really good. I really, yeah. I tell you who I love is Ron and Fez, man. The best. That's my fit. Your boy, Fez. Congrats, man. He came out of the closet? Came out. Yeah. Wow, that's been the worst kept secret of all time. I was time. say, I mean, like, I, it wasn't a surprise, but good for him for coming out. It's a surprise to me because in the world of radio, what? you're not, sh- listen, you're not sure in radio what is a bit. Like, it's almost well, like pro wrestling. Like, it goes on so long, you think, like, Sergeant Slaughter's like an actual guy in the army. By the way, I know Sergeant Slaughter. He's from Richmond. Is he really? Swear to God. What yeah. an underbite. He, he looks like Bill Cower, former he, coach of the Steelers. I actually knew his, uh, his, his, girlfriend uh she's passed away since must have caught a hundred beatings off that animal but we were at the funeral and uh and everyone's like that's just there's sergeant, sergeant slaughter wait a minute you met sergeant slaughter at a few fu- whose yeah, funeral his girlfriend's i told you yeah. she must have caught a hundred beatings off yeah. that animal <laughs> so he she, he put her in the uh she camel was a good clutch. friend she was a good friend and we didn't know that she was dating sergeant slaughter they've been dating for like years what no did she knew. die of i don't know she probably Oh my god! Uh, and so did you? She was young. Approach- I know that, huh? She was young. She's probably forty something. Did you sound young? Did you? Did you? <laughs> did you approach Sergeant Slaughter? No, it was a funeral. He just. How big is he in real life? No, I've like Tom Cruise, like five six. You're out of your mind. No, he's like five eight. He's not that big. I, I like, mean, he's jacked. He's still. He's not jacked. five eight. He, those guys are not big. I'm five ten. Yeah, you're five ten. I'm ish. I'm probably five eight. And he's you're, he's not as tall as me, Sergeant Slaughter. I just told you, but I don't. Strong. I think it was this guy that looks like Sergeant Slaughter. No, it's actually Sergeant Slaughter, but he goes like by Bill or something now. Bill Slaughter. I don't know. Yeah, Enos I know. Slaughter. I didn't stop for a card. Uh you should have went up to him and just put him in a figure four leg lock. Definitely, just kicked him in the nuts. Was he wearing Drop the stick? No, that's against the rules. The, Is it? the ref would have given you a very slow, deliberate fake ten count and said, "Knock it off now," and no pulling hair. No, like at a wrestler funeral, do they like? Tap, they like count to ten and then everybody walks out. I don't know. I like to picture Sergeant Slaughter in that 
stupid singlet he wore. He's like one of the few wrestlers that wore that. Did he have the singlet where it was one sleeve that went across diagonally his chest? No, he had iron two. Sh- iron Sheik. Salvatore Balomo yeah. had the one that went across the diagonally. One. And then Sheik. Iron Sheik did, didn't he? Iron, no, Iron Sheik was straight trunks. Was he? Yeah, he was in like a bathing suit. Iran, number one, number one, champ one, opening Anthony. Fuck, a, an ass. He, he, call, like, he calls in, doesn't he? Gets yeah, all fired it, up. He was on opening Anthony once. He was so drunk, he pissed his pants. And 